we want to do here today is take a moment to explain to you the steps needed to troubleshoot your lawnmower in case it does not start after winter. So first off, I'm going to attempt to start this lawnmower. We'll go ahead and see what it does. Typically after about three pulls, if it's not started yet, we may be already faced with the problem. So the first thing we want to focus on, and of course the simplest steps, are making sure that it has gasoline in the tank. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the gas cap and look inside the fuel tank, kind of maybe move the lawnmower a little bit to see that it's actually sloshing, that you have a, a good quantity. And the fuel level appears to be fine in this engine. All right, so the next step in troubleshooting the engine here is we have to take out the spark plug and see whether it's wet or dry to verify whether our, we're getting gasoline to the combustion chamber. So ordinarily, before performing any service work, you would remove the spark plug wire so the engine doesn't accidentally start. I also am holding a special tool that we offer that has uh, both of these spark plug style uh, ends on it. One is the 5 8 inch, which is the smaller of the two spark plugs we have, and the other end is the 13 16. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the spark plug wire. Simply going to pull up on it, remove it from the spark plug itself, kind of tuck it out of the way. And now I'm going to go ahead and engage the tool on the spark plug. Make sure it's fully seated, and then I'm going to use the hook end to give me leverage and loosen it. And then I can simply turn the spark plug out. Now if we look at the end of it, it is very wet with fuel right now. So that tells me a lot about what's going on. It tells me our carburetor and fuel system are most likely working in this event. But if this is dry, this is the stopping point which you'll have to kind of, uh, your carburetor could be plugged with fuel deposits or something else could be going on. So if you determine that you're not getting any fuel to your combustion chamber, you could be faced with a situation where your carburetor may be plugged with fuel deposits. And at that point, you're probably going to need to take it to a dealership or a, a trained mechanic to service the carburetor because it gets pretty complicated to work on at that point. But let's take a look at what can happen to the inside of the carburetor. You notice that we have this varnish buildup that happens in the carburetor float area and the bowl itself. And this is what happens when gasoline evaporates out and all of the chemicals that are left behind remain in the carburetor bowl and plug up important small passageways like a jet that's located here that lets all of the fuel from the bowl get into the airstream so it makes the engine run. In order to prevent fuel system problems like you've seen with our example carburetor, you need to begin by keeping the fuel fresh in your gas can. That starts with choosing a good quality alcohol-free fuel additive like Stable. It's the official fuel additive of all Briggs & Stratton engines. We recommend using Stable 360 Protection Ethanol Treatment. It works to prevent corrosion caused by moisture in today's ethanol blended fuels. While it's not widely known, gasoline actually can go bad in as little as 30 days. Stable 360 Protection keeps fuel fresh for up to 12 months. All right, now that we've noticed that if our spark plug is actually wet or dry, and we determine if it's dry, where to go with our fuel system direction. Now if the spark plug is actually wet and we still don't have a starting engine, we need to focus on the ignition system next. So what I'm going to be using is an inline spark tester. However, I'm going to be testing it straight to a ground, like the muffler here, and not directly to the spark plug. So what I'm going to do is place this tool in the end of the spark plug wire, and then the alligator clip end I'm simply going to place on the muffler and then in this window right here we will see if spark actually jumps the gap when I go to start the engine. All right well it looks like we do have spark so the next logical thing to check is compression. The engine needs three things to run. It needs fuel, spark, and compression. So the way we check compression is with a specialty tool, and it's called a compression tester. It's a device like this that threads into the spark plug hole, and you would pull the engine over and it would measure how much compression is being developed. However, this is a bit of a complicated test and it does require this specialty tool. So at that point, we would recommend you consult your local dealer for repair help. All right, so what we're gonna do now is remove the original spark plug. So I'm gonna use this spark plug tool 
I'm going to use the 5 8 end or the smaller end of it. And then the handle to physically break it loose. We're going to go ahead and turn the spark plug all the way out. Once it's removed, we'll go ahead and discard the old plug. We will reinstall a brand new spark plug. Now, be careful when putting the spark plug back in. It's best to turn it backwards one turn until you feel the, the threads re-engage and then slowly begin to turn the spark plug in until it's all the way in at the bottom and you will feel it stop when it's at the bottom. Reinsert the handle of the tool, give it a quarter turn, and now it's tight. We've got to reattach our spark plug wire because we're going to be making an attempt to start it. All right, well, it looks like we were successful at troubleshooting our engine. Hopefully, you found this information useful and you were able to figure out what was going on with your lawnmower as well. If not, we suggest that you contact your local dealer for help with repair. Briggs & Stratton does have the largest dealer network in the U.S. with over 12,000 dealers. If you need more information, please visit our website at briggsandstratton.com.